Welcome back to the Betway Summer Cup, the panel discussion with the guys that know the answers. So here is Jonathan Bloomberg. If you don't know, he's head of customer care, customer experience in terms of the Betway Group. Good to have Jonathan, Michael Decock, our champion trainer, uh, Gabriel Sama, head of racing for Four Racing, and Sean Terry, our champion trainer, too, is sitting here with us. These guys have won multiple Summer Cups. Now, let's carry on with uh, where we left off. Anfield's Rocket is back back at Turfantine. The Hollywood boys, I know, spoke to them. They're on their way here. They said they'll be here and they're coming to follow Anfield's Rockets. And here's the question, of course, to somebody like uh, Gabriel Soma. Let me start with you. I think we can ignore this horse's form in Durban. Didn't seem to enjoy Durban's. Won the classic. Loves Turfantine. Has he got any sort of chance? Betway's got Anfield's Rocket at 28 to 1. Yeah, so Clyde, it's pretty simple with a horse like this. He has a lot of class and that's shown by the the fact that he's able to win a thousand meters and then win a group one over 1800 so that's not in doubt Durban as you said put a line through it but I mean it wasn't terrible runs to run four lengths off Charles Dickon sure. is a very good run uh, his last start was outstanding he was finishing the race off well what I don't like is the fact that I heard that he had to do a little procedure after his last race uh, which is why he never ran in the charity mile and that look I'm not sure how true it is but if that is the case that puts me off of a horse like this because you need to have a trouble Free, uh, trouble free prep to win the Summer Cup. Yeah. Uh, Michael is a lovely horse, hey? I mean, a lovely looker. Yes. Um, I mean, I think he's going to be a better gelding. And I think the last time was his first run after gelding, if I remember correctly. But um, I'm with, with, with Gabby here. In, uh, I mean, it's not, these races are never easy. And then when you have a little hiccup in a prep, it's not, it's not easy. And I mean, we all know it's not straightforward coming to, into these races. You know, last time, he looks like he finished well. He went from 14th to 5th, but he was seven lengths off at the 400 and finished nine lengths off. Mm. So, you know, he, he's, I'm pretty sure that they would have loved to have had another run under the belt with him. That, that would have been really ideal for them. It haven't, they haven't had it. I think there's, there's a lot of question marks ar around what is quite a smart horse. Jonathan, does he make your top four this horse? He doesn't, um, you know, but just to echo, I think a uh, lot of ability, but I would be more concerned in terms of the gap between May and October, mm. um, where the horse has been and for whatever reason, and, you know, maybe just waiting for the rains, but, yeah, I'd have to see a little bit more before I'd mark yeah. that as a uh, top four finisher. Fair enough, fair enough. Sean, uh, this horse got an incredible acceleration. Yeah, Clyde, he, he used to run regularly, this horse, and mm. he used to come off sprints uh, okay. into these, um, winning in sprints into into one or two of these features, and, and I would have liked to see it a bit more racing, one or two more runs. Of it. Okay, so that's the, the take on. I'll stay with Sean because we want to talk, of course, about uh, about litigation. Uh, Daryl Marie tipped this horse before the nominations came out, Sean. He told me this 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 will win the Summer Cup. But um, he's, he's sort of leaning towards a couple of others now. After his last start, what's your, what was your take of his last start? I thought he was right up there. He, he seemed to finish well. And I know there are a lot of horses looking to qualify too at the end of the day. Um, but what, your, what was your take? I was happy with the run, Clyde. I mean, obviously, I think that he's still um, going to come on from that. Okay. But he did he did suffer a little bit of interference. Yeah. Uh, Billy Bowlegs came on to him and just hampered him a little. And he's got a nice big action. And he certainly wasn't using himself as he should have been the last furlong. OK, I'm glad to hear that he will come on from it. Uh, that's good. That's good news. Gabriel? Glad I make him one of the horses to beat in the race. I think he's had a phenomenal prep into the race. He was gelded. He had the sprints. He had the mile. He then had the 1800 in the victory moon where, as Sean said, Billy Bowlegs did come on to him a little bit. But in saying that, I still don't believe that he could have been 100%, and I think improvement is expected. He looked really well in the ring. I am a little bit upset that he did draw 17, because, of course, you would like to have been drawn in single uh, figures. But he's a big striding horse, and Craig Zach is riding really well. So it's nice to see him on board, and I'd be disappointed if he's not in the first three. Okay. So you uh, top three for, for Gabriel in terms of litigation. Michael, does this horse make your top three, top four? Nice prep. Again, you know, one talks about the form. And um, I'm going to disagree with Gabby. I like the form from the from the group too. I think if um, if one goes on average rating for the races, I think it sticks out head and shoulders. Mate, does this litigation make your top three, top four, John, in your book? Maybe just outside. I think obviously the 17 draw is a little bit of a negative for me. But, um, yeah, listen, I mean, I, I did fancy Atticus Finch um, 
you know, before the last run. And obviously, you know, the weight swings on a couple of runs, it does bring this horse a hell of a lot closer. Um, like the prep, um, I think there's also something that, that sort of keeps popping out, you know, to me is that what actually is going to go and make the pace in this race? And I know we, I spoke to Sean about it a little bit earlier. I'm not saying a horse like this would go and do it, but this is the type of horse that could race handier than you think. And from a 17 draw, you're either going to take your chances and go handy or you're dropping out and you're going to have 20 lengths to make up turning for home. So yeah, there's yeah, a decision yeah. to be made. Sure. That's interesting. We'll ask Sean in a minute. Uh, let's talk about Zeus quickly, if, if, if we can. This horse was, you know, when he started out in his career, he turned it on tremendously. He was really top division. I even had a conversation with Tony Miller to buy him, to be quite honest, because I thought, you know, he'd be... But then he went off for him, but he's come back in good form again. You, uh, and the guys, that, uh, some have taken... What price did you have? I think you had double, what, double figures, didn't you? They've taken it all. I said, it's 18 to 1 now. Great, great bunch of guys. Um, yeah, can't laid them some big prices off to the draw. Um... Difficult one for me. I think if I got to shoot uh, straight, I mean, this horse, you know, was 104, 106, probably at the high, dropped to a 94, uh, you know, had three wins in a row, beat Breeze over, uh, yeah, gave it way, top sail, Blackthorn. None of those horses for me, you know, would feature in this race. Um, this horse is now back to a 111, a higher mark than it was uh, earlier this year when it had lost its form. Yes, there's an argument, maybe something was found that this horse could have turned the corner or maybe just matured a little bit later. But this is 2,000 metres against some really, really good horses over 2,000 metres. So, mm. you know, unless some magic has been found and, you know, this horse really is a 111 or better, maybe a case, but maybe over further, 2428, you know, against the type of horses that it has yeah. been beating. Yeah, nicely put. Michael, the, that's the question is the 2,000. He's been very good over the 2-4 and those sort of distances, yes. Yeah, he's a horse that got his penalty for getting beat in the derby with um, Aragosta beating that's right. short head. That's right. And he's typical of those horses that at the time, while um, the, the penalties are harsh for those horses that lose, but they need to find, they haven't found their legs yet. I'm not saying they'll never be what they were penalised, but you look at him, he's had to come back to 92, uh, 94, I think it was, to become competitive again. And there's nothing like winning. Those horses then develop the confidence. So they're going from the bottom up instead of starting from the top mm. coming down. Uh, and he's typical of one of those type of horses. There may, there may have been one or two uh, problems with him too, I don't know. Um, but he's, he's found his form, he's found his confidence. He's a horse that comes in here hard knocking confident yeah but for me he'd be have to, they'd have to go flat out for him to have a chance there'd have to be a, a, a pretty good amount of speed on uh, and he's he's not the kind of horse judging by his form that they're going to use his stamina and let him get out there and say catch me if you can so he looks like he always comes from off the yeah yeah so the, the question so where's the speed here where what's what's the have we got something well there's the obvious uh in, in will atticus uh, go again or what <laughs> well why wouldn't he? he's been very comfortable in the front yeah uh, but, you know, sometimes nobody really likes to, 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 to go handy for the big brass. Um, you know, there's also um, litigation. There was another one I was looking at. I'm not convinced you won't see Bless the Stars forward. You've got a very confident jockey off a, off a draw, too, um, and, and is a good pace judge. Most of them don't know where they are in a race. But he's got a bit of a chance. Um, there's two or three. Yeah. But they're not going to go there for anybody else but themselves. Yeah, Remember Sean's that. twitching again now when you start talking about his horses about Gaint. <laughs> starts to twitch, eh? I don't think it's going to the front. Gabriel, what's the story with Zeus for you? Clyde, so they've definitely found something. And I'll tell you why I say that is four runs ago, he ran over 3,000 meters in a middle stakes. And he ran fourth, got beat a 1.35 lengths to American Grayson. So, uh, since then, he's won three in a row hard held. Um, personally, I don't like him, Clyde. I think this is a major jump up in class, going from a middle stakes, a pinnacle and a java into a summer cup. And one thing I don't like, and this is my personal view, is a horse coming back in distance. I way prefer a horse stepping up than a horse coming back um, because you need speed to win a 2,000 meters at Turfentine. And I know it sounds weird, but it's very difficult for a stayer to step down to a 2,000 and have the speed to win a 2,000. Hopefully he can run into the back end of the quartets for the connections. They've taken their chances here. There was the uh, stayers race on the day, on the day yeah, yeah. Uh, that looked pretty much at his mercy. So they've taken their chances. But 
Let's see, not for me at this stage. OK. Sean, so that you, they've been hinting you, something's going to the front from your stable. Listen, I'd, I'd love to go to the front and, and go easy gallop, but I certainly ain't going to go making it for anybody else. Sure. Um, Cousin Casey's got a good turn of foot, so has, bless my stars, they don't need uh, for, the, for us to go the clappers. So I hope I get a soft lead in front. It'll be a beautiful thing. Yeah. But I ain't going to be making it for the rest of them. No, I'm sure you. I'm sure. You, I'm sure you're not. Let. I want to just now jump into chatting about your horses quickly, Sean. Let, let's just talk about, if we can, uh, uh, bless my stars and cousin Casey. Let's chat about them. I mean, cousin Casey, a fantastic performance um, here on the high felt. The, the question mark we spoke about at the draw, naturally, uh, the distance at the end of the day. And uh, bless my stars has just been an absolute revelation. She's been unreal. Yeah, listen, Bless My Stars has done really well. Uh, I, I heard a few giggles July time that I'd actually accepted for her to run in the July and, you know, watch the space. But anyway, she acquitted herself really well, uh, stepped it down into a Phillies Group 2, uh, one full of running. And um, her comeback run, I thought, was, was eye-catching. I would have loved Cousin Casey to have a prep run like, like uh, Bless My Stars had. The two draw naturally with Richard on uh, is a big plus, and I don't think she needs to be anywhere in the race. She can be box seat, she can be come from off them. Um, it's hard to take on a field like this and be confident, but I am confident of a good run. Yeah. Well, we've heard you say that before, and we watched you win. So I think we need to take that into account. But it's good that they well. You, I know you said the last time you said, Grant, you asked him to give it a bit of a chance and sit. So would, I would imagine the instructions is ride this horse like it doesn't stay. Listen, Grant has got, uh, you know, every opportunity to redeem himself. Sure. Um, I was a little unhappy with the last run, but he explained to me why. And, you know, you can't tie the jockeys of this caliber down to, to firm instructions. He knows that the horse needs to be doing his best work late. Right. And I'm, I'm very happy to have him on again. He knows the horse really well. He's got a lot of confidence in this horse. And... Um, yeah, I, uh, although it's second run and, and out of a week form line, um, I'm very happy with him. <laughs> I, I can't not, uh, we can't not ask you about safe passage. We spoke about those who watched the draw would have heard Mike's views. And you mentioned the, the, the issue when this horse went to Cape Town and the fracture and all that sort of stuff. He's coming back to his best or...? I don't know, really. You know, you to be honest, know, yeah. this horse is, is, uh, is an enigma. Um, we've, been, we've been... I mean, he's... Everything's well with him, you know, but just struggling to find that form that 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 he was in of November last year. Um, I can't say that I've I've seen that in him. You know, he runs uh, not good, not bad races, but not good races. Yeah. You know, he also took off within a, a length or two of the four I just mentioned previously, but didn't get within five lengths of them. You know what I mean? And he was having his okay. You can call it his second run after. You know, we got. Tanta on, blinkers on, blinkers off, blink, Tanta off. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, he's he's just a horse which we're struggling to find what was there. And you know, all we need to do is find four or five lengths, and he'll have this field stone cold at sure, the weights. Sure. You know, if you look at the, the weights of Porto Manzana, but I just don't see him in that kind of form anymore. You yeah. Know? You, you, Jonathan, uh, Sean's horses, Mike's horses. You want to give your overview on where we stand? Because there are a couple of other, there's Shrewdies in here, Billy Bowlegs, Electric Gold. Obviously, we're going to talk about Porto Menzano and Winchester Mansion in a moment. But there are some Shrewdies in here that we need to touch on. So let me let me start with Bless My Stars. Fortune's in her favour, other than second run after rest for me. Draw jockey, um, course and distance. The filly stays... Yeah, Richard's going to be able to choose where he wants to ride this horse from. Um, so plenty to like about her. Um, definite top four contender for me. Cousin Casey, again, just second run off the rest. But I don't think one actually realises how good this horse was. I mean, I think if you watch a couple of replays from Gravel as a two-old, this horse from poor draws obliterated fields under the hands. Um... I think I think the twelve draws actually in this horse's favour is going to have Grant's going to have no option but to have this horse eight or ten lengths off and the, you know if you have a concern does this horse stay? Yeah. It's going to get every chance to stay. Um, the horse no doubt will have improved. Um, I thought that you know the Met run if you go and have a look at what went wrong there and the horse found itself in front into a Gale Falls headwind and only got beaten one point eight lengths. This is a serious race horse. Um, would not shock me if this horse. One convincingly. Hmm? 
Interesting. Very interesting. Gabriel, I just want to talk to you quickly. Atticus Finch, Billy Bowlegs, Electric Gold. Are they shrewdies in the, well, listen, they're in the top 10 in the market, so I don't want to say shrewdies, but they're the type of horses, if they had to win, you, would you be surprised that they? Clyde, uh, simply, Billy Bowlegs is my first choice in the race. Good. Atticus Finch is my second choice in the race. Ah. Um, as I said, I'm going the victory moon form, and it's pretty simple as to why. If you have a look at a horse like Billy Bowlegs, as a three-year-old, he ran in the Champions Challenge. He was able to get beat one length to a horse called Porto Man. In the Champions Challenge as a, as a late three-year-old, he's now six months down the line and he's better off at the weights. He's having his third run after a rest. It should be a case of he's made more than one length improvement. And even if he hasn't, just with the weight difference, it brings him closer to Porto Manzano. So he has to be a massive runner. It's impossible this horse is 18 to 1. Atticus Finch, unexposed. We have no clue as to what his limits are. Mm. He's been very, very impressive, and he's had a lovely prep into the race. Um, Calvin rode a really good race last time. He got to the front, and he actually went a sedate pace that suited him, and he kicked off it. If he gets a similar type of... Uh, front running lead then he's going to be a massive runner but we don't know how good this horse is he could be he could be 125 we don't know yeah we'll see on saturday okay. it's his acid test but he's a massive runner and electric gold sprung up uh, i was coming up the inside electric the closing gold. stages correct he did uh, there's two concerns is that the, he's uh, badly off at the weights now with those horses but more than that if you have a look at the comments, respiratory noise, respiratory noise, okay. he now steps up to 2,000 meters. That's a complete put-off for me. I avoid horses like that big time. Before we close up, I want to ask you, Sean, Winchester Mansion, great horse. Porto Manzano being a great horse. Those are the two that are top the boards at the moment at this point in time. Don't ask me to tip on just a mention because I found this horse to be the best handicapped horse that I've seen in racing in the Gravel 1900. I tipped it to the world and it got beat. It came to win everything after that. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, he's done really well. Um, but it just shows you what uh, the habit of winning does for a horse. How he just kept on improving. And obviously, as Mark touched on, he's got to have an undeniable chance based on his charity mile run. Gabriel, the two, which is the mansion, uh, Porto Manzano, we need to just touch on those, talk about the top two in the market, the baby hitters in the, in the race. Of the two, I prefer Porto Manzano because of the prep. Johan's done a phenomenal job with this horse and hats off to him to win a Summer Cup, to win the Champions Challenge and a Jubilee in between and then be able to come and win a charity mile, second run after a race, dropping from a 2,000 is, is unheard of. So well done to him and it puts this horse in a really good position to defend his crown. Uh, he raced three wide for a large, a, a large, long part of the way in the charity mile. So the fact that he was able to win the race was a really good win. And because of that, I don't think the two pounds will make too much of a difference. So he, of the, as I said, of the charity mile horses, I still think he can follow up out of that race. Okay. The big hitters, Winchester Mansion. Porto Manzano of the two, which do you prefer? Porto Manzano, I prefer of the two. It would actually okay. be nice that uh, Lawrence will be able to watch the race because we were in Paris together when the horse won the uh, charity mile and someone had to show him the replay of the horse winning. Um, so, yeah, I think um, uh, the draw to me doesn't make any difference for that type of horse. There's only one way they're going to ride that horse. We know the horse stays. Argentinian horse getting better, at, you know, as time goes on. Yeah, Winchester Mansion... I don't know, I, I, I prefer Billy Bowleg, just to echo what Mark said, spot on, third run off, everything in its favour. Um, you know, and I go back to one run, if you have take the time to watch the rerun of the derby when Demelo won on Son of Raj and stole it at the 1,000 metres. Yeah, um, yeah. This was an unlucky loser yeah. of the derby. Yeah. Um, this, horse would, this horse would have been higher than a 117 a long, long time ago. Great prep, ranged up uh, in the last run, it looked you know, for all the money in the world that it would go on and win, um, definitely my first choice. Okay. Well, you've heard it from the uh, experts here today, and we want to thank them very much for their time. Don't forget about all of the additional pools, the tote pools, the pick six money, the quartet money that's coming in in terms of Saturday afternoon. Make a note, because there's lots and lots to be had in terms of our big day. The pick six pool, they say 10 million. The quartet, they're talking something between four and five million here from the Betway Summer Cup team. Thank Thank you, everybody. Please make sure if you're on your way to Turfentine on Saturday that you get here early because you don't want to miss it.